Hi, and welcome to this course on CI/CD for React developers. In this course, you're going to learn that how to build CI/CD pipeline and how it is useful to us. Hi, my name is Pranjal, and I will be your course instructor. You might be familiar with the term DevOps, which simply means a set of practice in order to build, test, release your code in small, frequent steps. And this CI/CD is one of the core practices of DevOps. CI which simply refers to continuous integration, where it automates the workload for developer. If developer do any changes into their code base, then CI server will going to build it, test it, and then merge it to our shared repo. And this will not make our workload effective, but also it will going to protect us from the conflicts causing by different Git branches. Then we have CD which refers to continuous deployment. It will going to deploy the tested code into production, into live production environment. Then at the end, you can say the purpose of CI/CD is to reduce the workload and effort for both the team, developer team and the operation team in order to deploy new code or new changes. In this course, here you are going to learn how to create full functionality react app and then you will learn that how you can create and publish repositories into github and the end the main thing you will learn about github action which is a ci cd server and you will get it know that how it works in the real world so see you in the class hi there and welcome back here in this lesson you're going to have a quick tutorial on how you can use git and github okay so this is my github account and now here just choose this option new repository from here you need to provide the name of your repository and here in my case i'm just going to copy this my react app okay now here you got two options public or private so i have chosen public so that anyone around the world can access my source code so in this way i have created my github repository now i'm going to create a simple react app okay for it you need to open your command prompt and just write npx create react app basically with the help of this npx create react app you will be able to create your react app within a clicks yeah you heard right like with the help of this create react app you don't need to install dependencies configuration files and other comments like babel webpack and bunch of things you need to do in order to create a react app this toolkit simplifies the process it removes all the complexities and makes react app simple and for this you just need to have one package which is npm and just run this command to create your react app so here you can see a new folder is created and inside this folder here you can see some bunch of files is there some bunch of directories is there node module contains all the libraries packages which are in or required in order to run a react app then we have package.json it is just like a manifest file which contains the versions and whatever things of libraries and packages which is required to run our react app now this is my visual studio code and ide which i prefer and yeah i will suggest if you're a developer you must use one of your ide so that it will make your task much easier and saves a lot of time as a developer it will increase the productivity okay now just write npm start and it will going to run your react app which we have created just now so this is our react app up and running now after this, I'm going to push my this React app to GitHub repository. So first of all, I'm going to run this command git status, which provides the details of the status of our local Git repository. And here you can find that each files are untracked, but after using git add command, all the files are now tracked one. And at last, you need to you need to commit the changes okay just so simply use this git commit hyphen m and whatever you want to put a message okay so we have successfully committed the changes into 
our local get repo now you need to just push this local get repo to github so just simply use git push command that's it okay so just write git and push so we have successfully pushed our local source code to the github now let me refresh this page and here you can find our source code into github so this is all about that how you can create repository and publish it into github hope you understand in in this quick tutorial if you have any kind of doubt you can ask me in the q and section till then keep learning keep exploring and stay motivated hi there and welcome back in previous lesson you have learned that how you can create a github repository and publish your source code into github now in this lesson you are going to learn that how you can deploy your react app to github pages now this github pages is one of the utility of github through which you can host a website about yourself about your organization or your project directly from your repository which is already up there on github so let's do it so here in this setting option you get an option of your github pages okay now this is our source code our react app source code now let us do some of the things which are required in order to deploy our react app to the github so the very first thing you need to install the github pages which is one of the node module you can say so just write npm install then get dash pages then dash dash save then dash dev okay now here you can see we have added 16 packages and now it is there into our react now to check this that we have successfully installed github pages or not here you can see we got this gh pages at the bottom of this package.json now here i'm going to put home page and here you need to provide the link of your repository okay so here you can see that the sample here you, you need to give the username then github.io and slash the, your repository name so impsrv is the username of my github account okay and uh, this my react app is the name of my repository okay and uh, yeah don't forget to add this https thing okay done so now we need to add some scripts as well before it let me you know check this url here you can see that there is no github page available right now but it will be after you know deploying a react app to that particular url now here you need to add some scripts in order to deploy your react app like free deploy just write npm run build then deploy and just write gh pages dash d build okay now everything is done here save this packet.json open terminal once again and here just write get status and here you can see this, these two files are now modified now I'm just going to add these changes into my local git and commit with the message added gh pages and after this commit we're going to push the changes which made we made here and here you can see that there is nothing to commit let's write git push and the changes which we made is now be reflected to the github repository let me open my react app repository and inside this package.json and here you can see the changes we made into our local repo is now reflected into this remote repo okay now you need to run one more command in order to publish your react app to the github page so just write npm 
run deploy that's it now after running up this command here you can see at the left side a new folder is created the build folder which contains the source code of our github page okay the index.html will going to reside up there into this directory and now we can see we got a message published now i'm going to open the browser and check that url so just go to the setting option then pages and this is the url which i was talking all about the github pages now here you can see that our app our react app is up and running in this way you have deployed your react app to the github pages hope you understand how it works till then keep learning keep exploring and stay motivated hi there and welcome back in the previous lesson you have learned that how you can deploy your react app to github pages here in this lesson you will going to learn about github action which is another product of github so basically github action is a continuous integration and continuous delivery tool or you can say ci CD tool that allow us to automate our build test and deployment pipeline with the help of github action you will be able to create a workflow that build and test anything happen into your repository like if any changes you made into your repository then it will going to create a workflow and it will going to test or according your workflow okay and deploy your updated code into the production as well with the help of github action you can easily run your application into three different environment like linux windows mac os okay and here we are going to create a workflow that apply the changes which we made on repository into our production okay so here you got some name then platform then different versions of your react okay and then you, you here you have some steps which it will going to follow okay and here you can see that it will going to select your branch first now here i want to add the most important thing which is uh action for github page so this is 3.2k you uh, action the deploy to github page here i'm just going to copy this okay and paste it over at the last of my workflow file workflow yaml file and here you can see the other steps are to build our react app into different platforms and then it will going to test our application as well okay now there we have some indentation problem let me sort out this okay so now our workflow yaml file is now ready now let us change the name as well deploy using github action okay so i have created the trigger as well that if you're going to push something if you're going to pull something then it will going to take action and create a workflow okay and we already have one workflow which happened when we have created the github page now we have another workflow which we have created now okay this is our node.js yaml file which is located inside dot github folder then workflow folder okay now here you can see that once we have clicked on the gh pages branch it is not working right now because we are actually updating the things up there because it is the where your source code of your google not google your github pages is located so once your workflow have been successfully then you're going to have your github pages source code okay now let me open the workflow action now here you can see that we have successfully deploy this workflow now here let me do one thing like i'm just going to make some changes and show you that how it automatically deploy the things and update it into our production so this is my app.js file and here i'm just going to add with branch also 
and this is here you can see it's just written learn react but after commit it will change the title or you can see the heading from learn react to learn react with Pranjal Srivastava. So here you can see it is running on Ubuntu platform on different versions of react. And once it is done the changes will be going to reflect it into our production. So here you can see that GitHub action makes our process so much streamlined. Okay, this is a very minor changes which I have made, but there could be some changes which uh, happens in real world which cannot be, you know, done proper way. Then it will going to um, create problems, create chaos. That's why we need CI/CD platform like GitHub Action is one of them. Jenkins is one of them. Okay, so it makes the process so much streamlined. Now here you can see this is our old application and after refresh it is now changed from learn react with Pranjal Srivastava. So this is how github action works. Hello friends welcome back. Here in this lesson we're gonna set up an environment for our project which is todo app. Here we're gonna use a command line interface tool which is create react app through which we will be able to create and run react application quickly. And the best part of it is without doing any kind of configuration. You just need to write npx space create dash react dash app and whatever you want to choose name for your project. In our case, to do app is the name of our project. And after it, when your command is completed, just simply go inside your directory, your project directory, and just write down npm start and it it's going to start your react application here i'm using visual studio code as ide for my project which makes my task much easier and uh, saves a lot of time so here you can see that our react application is up and running now i'm going to remove some of the files from my react project so like you know test cases report web titles then some SVGs and so on. So first of all, I'm going to remove this content because these contents are not required for this time. And uh, let me remove this section as well. And here I'm going to use the header tag. Okay. Let me check some more things. Yeah, this icons as well. I'm going to remove. Now just open app.js and use header tag and just write simply hello world. Okay, h should be small case. So here we have created simple hello world app and now in another lesson we're gonna jump into bootstrap thing. Till then keep learning, keep exploring. Hello friends, welcome back. In this lesson we're going to add bootstrap into our website. Okay, so this is a simple hello world app which we have created. And now we're gonna add the bootstrap and feel the magic of bootstrap into our website. So first of all, before jumping into bootstrap, we'll need to create the component. And inside the component folder, we're going to create a JS file form.js. Okay. And now here we're going to use fragment. Fragment is one of the features of React which allows you to wrap multiple elements without adding an extra node into your dome okay so i'm using the fragment here instead of using fragment you can simply add a root dome but that makes ridiculous okay so you need to use fragment and now this is the bootstrap the main page and here we're going to include all the cdn links into our project the first cdn link is about the css and the second one will be about JavaScript. Okay, so copy that URL and open index.html, which is the main, or you can say the primary HTML page, which you can found our in our React project. So I have pasted this, the CDN links, into my index.html, and now we're going to open this form section here. This is a basic form, which you can find. And I'm going to copy this layout 
and paste it over into my form.js okay open form.js and here I, again i'm going to use the fragment and yeah you and you can see we got some error so you need to put the closing tag and for input now here you can see a simple form is on our react project email address and the password here we have two text area and one button and here you can see it is too much responsive as well you can see while changing the size of your browser so this is all about how you can add the bootstrap into your web app and in the next part we're going to style up our bootstrap template into our required doodle app till then keep learning keep exploring and stay motivated hello friends welcome back here in this lesson we're gonna style our doodle app okay so by the way what exactly the bootstrap is bootstrap is the most popular css framework which is used for developing the responsive and the mobile first websites so here we're gonna do some changes some modifications into our app and make it look like a to do app thing okay so first of all we just need only one text area so i'm going to remove all other things so now here you can see we have okay i'm going to also remove this hello world thing as well which is not required right now so here we have one title which is to do app and one text area and one button for submitting our to do item here i'm going to use this container my three a container i'm going to create m y simply means margin m means margin and y means at which direction you want to put okay and then we're going to use the justify content for the alignment of our container and we have used the center alignment here and now i'm going to create another div and here i'm going to use the col which means column then md means medium okay for the grid system so here we have created a container and put our form there okay now here you can see we have button which is primary here you can do some more thing some more options are also available you can look into the boost for website and we'll get plenty of options up there now here we're going to you know add some borders and then here we're going to also add some round corners into our border let me choose the 50 pixel we'll go fine then here i'm going to use the padding to 30 px now let us check it out how it looks like it looks cool now we need to change the color of our background okay why it looks so much you know simple so we're going to add some background up there and uh, let me increase the size of button as well the width of the button now it looks good and also make it somehow round okay just add the style and remove the border and your button will, will be more look like a round button okay and uh, here we're going to add some placeholder as well like write something like try typing do exercise which is very much required okay so now we have header to do app one text area with some placeholder and some bit button with round shaped let me do some changes into header thing as well but before it we're going to add the background image so simply use the url and the directory of your image so this is the background image which i have chosen for and uh, here i'm going to change the color of the background of our border okay the content inside the border will be into white color and at the outer area it would be the background color 
let me change the border color as well to the white now it's good okay we got some problem with the header so open you the css file the index.css and here you, you need to add the h1 and choose the color to black and uh, let me check it out yeah it's working fine let me increase the size and change the font style as well so here i'm going to use sans, sans serif the most commonly used font style and here i'm going to choose 48 px for my font size so now our app look you know great let me show you one one, one more thing that how I have created the background image this is the paint I have divided into two parts and here I have added one color of different strength so this is a dark blue color and the light blue color and change the size as well and now I'm going to increase the size to the back the original one and here you can see in this way you can create the gradient background of your choice color okay Blue is my favorite color, so I've used the blue color. You can choose whatever color you want or any background image of your choice. So this is all about how you can create the, you know, the template of the Todo app. In the next lesson, we're going to learn how we can add some functionalities into our Todo app. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, and stay motivated. Hello, friends, and welcome back. Here in this lesson, you will learn about React State and React Event. So what exactly the react state is the state is built-in react object that is used to contain data about the component and a component state can be changed over time whenever it changes and the component then re-renders it so this is how this react single page application works so here we're going to create a input data as a state for our text area box okay so we got some error and the error is simply just because we are using class here you just need to change the class to class name okay because the class is already the reservoir into our react that's why we are getting that kind of problem so now let me refresh this page and here you can see all the errors went away okay now we're going to create the on change event for our react application so what basically the on change event is uh, it is like it, it will going to actually detects when the value of an input element changes so here you can see we have a text area and here whatever which we're going to pass into our text area so it is a kind of event and here we're actually collecting those characters those text from the text area okay and changing into our input data the state of our to do app so here by default i'm giving an empty value for our input data okay and now here i'm going to define a function so this function will just going to output the content whatever content which we are passing on our text area and uh, i'm going to change the input data to the the whatever text are uh, which are there on in, to my input box okay and at last I'm going to just simply write down console.log and this dot state dot input data now let's see how it works so here you can see just I have written hello it detected the content at each phase and this is how this the state changes and the company re-renders hope you understand in the next lesson we're going to learn how to exactly add the content into our to-do list that's all keep learning keep exploring and stay motivated hello friends and welcome back to yet another lesson and here we're going to create a new function which handles event caused by the submitting a form for this i'm going to use on submit event handler on submit event 
is an event handler attached to the form submission event. Inside it, we're going to mention our new function. So let us check it out what exactly our to do item will look like before adding to our actual to do list. For this, I'm going to use console.log for the output. So just write this dot state dot input data. Okay. And now refresh the page. So here, let me write something. So here you can see that while pressing up the submit button, what exactly happening is it is actually re-rendering our react page and we will not able to have the console.log output into our console. So here I'm going to use the alert option. Okay. So with alert, a pop-up message would be there and it includes our to-do item list. So here instead of console.log I'm going to remove it write alert and you need to put it this into the backticks and at the beginning you need to put the dollar sign okay now let us check it out what our to-do item will look like just write hello add and here you can see a pop-up message is there and it says hello so in this way we got our to-do item and the next step is to add the to-do item into our to-do list. So for it, we need to create a to-do item list. So the to-do item list will going to contain whatever we're going to pass into our input box and that to-do item will be go inside our to-do list. And uh, we're going to also create a list where we're going to mention all the to-do items. So let us create a new JS file inside the component folder list.js and here we need to create a list so simply write down to do item equal to square braces in this way we have created a list and here input data and the to do item are the control component so basically the control component in react are those in which the form data is handled by the component state. So these both are the control components of our application. In the next lesson, we're going to create the format, the template for our list.js. So till then, keep learning, keep exploring and stay motivated. Well friends and welcome back. And here we're going to create the template for our list.js and for it we're going to use again bootstrap before it we're going to import to do list into our main form.js okay for it you just need to simply write down import to do list from then you need to mention your file name and here after form you need to simply write down to do list and uh, it will call that particular component basically the to-do list is a component and we are nesting this component into our form.js so this is our list.js and here to the bootstrap website we have the option list group and here i'm going to use the basic list group option so remove this part use the fragment again and put this and instead of class you need to use class name okay and uh, let us check it out the how our to do app look like so we have uh, items here into our application so let me add some margins so simply i'm going to use my-3 and here we, you can see that there is a space between a button and our list and uh, now we're going to pass the actual list the to-do list which we have created so here you need to pass it as a prop okay so this is to-do item and we have one item which is do exercise so we're going to pass this list and see that do exercise comes into our app or not so here I'm going to write simply items equal to inside 
curl reverses this dot state dot to do items we're going to actually passing this list as a prop and now we're going to use it inside list.js so first of all I'm going to remove all that thing and here let me remove each of these before writing the actual thing because you need to access the list and to access the list we actually need to use the map okay and first of all I'm also going to convert it into the class component so here this I'm going to copy each line one by one so UI class equal to list group and here you need to mention the name of your list this dot props dot item now which is your actual uh, list name and here use the map function and I'm going to put the value and the index by default you can put your value as an index but if you're sure that whatever content you want to write down into your list will be uh, unique then you need to you do not need to use the index but if you're not sure that whatever items you're going to add into your list is common or uncommon and use this index function and here you can see the new variant of our fragment earlier we just used the two angular braces now here as we need to pass the key we are actually writing down react or fragment and the key with the index and here li class is equal to a list group items and the value so here we can see we are able to access our to do item list now again i'm going to put some space do exercise okay and now let me add one more item into our list so let's write down create react app project and here you can see that particular item which we have added into our list is coming into our to do app so in the next lesson we're going to create a function which actually add the to do items into our to do list okay that's all for this lesson keep learning keep exploring and stay motivated hello friends and welcome back and here in this lesson we're going to add our to do items into our to do list till now we have created the template for our to do app and also i have shown you that how you can handle the input data and now we're going to focus on adding those items into our to-do list so this is the function which we have created through this we have generated a pop-up message which contains the to-do item and now we're going to add this conditional statement which will going to check that the input data is empty or not and then it will going to proceed further so in that case you just need to write this dot state dot input data not equal to empty now here i'm going to use the let variable you can also use the const variable as well but with the help of let you will be able to reassign a new value to any variable but in case of const you cannot reassign a new value at all so here i'm using the let keyword rather than using the const keyword and now here i have used the separate operator which simply means three dots and you need to give provide the name of your list and the new item so it will going to append it into our list okay now here i'm going to use set state and with the help of set state we can update the state of any component and then it will instruct re react to re-render the component and its children with the updated state so this set state will give a response to any kind of event handlers server responses or any kind of prop change then it will going to proceed its process so here we have given a new value to our to do item and giving the input data empty okay let us check 
now we are able to add the to do item into our to do list or not so there's there is a problem which we got and to solve that problem we i'm going to use the span tag okay with the help of span tag we will be able to achieve our goal so simply add span tag and here you need to pass this function on click and you need to provide the name of your the responding function which is handle submit okay and uh, let us check it out that it is still working or still giving a problem so again we are not able to add the to do item into our to do list let me do one more thing we i'm going to change the button type to the button okay and now let us check test yeah now here you can see that we are able to add the to do items into our to do app list so in this way we have achieved the goal of adding to do items into our to do list so that's all here i have shown you that how you can create the add function through which you will able to add items into your to-do list hello friends and welcome back here in this lesson i'm going to add a new feature into our to-do app which is delete so that we will be able to delete any to-do item from our to-do list here i'm going to use the bootstrap button to be specific the danger one which has a color red color so i'm going to put this code snippet just after a light tag so that we could have the button for each to do item so here we can see we have the danger button just after every to do item now here i'm going to change the size of our button so we need to do some kind of changes into the class of the button adding a space between let me do this afterward here just write down btn dash sm which simply means that you want a small button and here you have added the space between the to do item and the button if you want to increase some more spaces you can increase the magnitude from one to three or four okay and here let me add the width for the button okay let me add the margin for x axis as well i'm going to set it as auto so here we have the small buttons for our to do items now we're going to add the functionalities into our these buttons but before it we need to change the title from the danger to remove i think remove would be better let's write down remove and yeah but i think we can do one more thing instead of putting the button on the, in the at the bottom of the list it's better to add beside the to do item i think this looks much cool than the previous one isn't it instead of remove i think we should add this cross symbol now it looks perfect okay so now i'm going to create a function for this button and then we're going to pass that particular function or you can say method as a prop to the child component so here i have created the delete item function instead of event as we need to delete that particular to do item we have to access the the index for that particular to do item and th then only we will be able to delete that particular to do item from our to do list now let me pass this function 
to the child component which is list.js and here if we're going to press that particular remove button it will going to output the button clicked and here I have to mention that particular function for it you need to do the binding of that function so here I have okay, we got some error okay not a problem so this dot props dot delete item this is the function which I have created into the parent component and I am with the help of you know with the help of props I will be able to use that particular method into our child component so I don't think so that any other changes are required here now let us open our react app and with, let me click this cross button now here you can see we got the message button clicked so as many time I have clicked the button that particular number was there so in this way I have created a simple a remove button and which is also working fine in the next lesson we're going to add the functionality of, for the deletion of that particular to do item from the list so that's all till then keep learning keep exploring and stay motivated hello friends and welcome back so now we have created the delete button and it is now working fine as well so now here in this lesson we're going to add the functionality of deletion into our delete button so this is the method which we are going to use delete items and here first of all we need to access the list and here we need the index of the to-do item which we want to be deleted so first of all I'm going to create a new variable original and it will contain the, the list which is our to do item and here another variable which I'm going to create it, it is selected and here I'm going to use the filter method filter method in react is pretty much what it says it is a process of looping through an array and including or excluding elements inside that array based on a condition which you are going to provide so here we're going to ignore that particular selected index which whichever we want to delete so here we are using the filter method so here I'm also going to pass the index so that you can see the index of each to do items okay and here I'm also going to pass this index okay now let us open the react app and here we can see we have the index 0 do exercise then 1 create react project so this is the index and through which we're going to delete that particular to do item from our to do list so let me remove this index that is not required and uh, yeah so here you can see that we we are passing the index from here and then this method which is up there on our parent component then if we're going to run that particular function and delete that particular to do item and here one more thing which we need to do is to use the set state function with the help of set state function we could you know change the value of the variables okay so simply write down this dot set state and here this write original and select it the filtered array and here we need to one, do one more thing is to add this add the spread symbol okay so you need to put the you know the square braces and then three dots at the beginning so in this way we are actually accessing the list our to-do list now let us open our to-do app and here let me write something here like test 
now let me press this cross button and it is working fine so, so in this way i have created a simple to do app where you can add the to do items and delete whenever that particular to do item is completed to do item is very much required to manage your time more efficiently so try to convert your big projects into smaller tasks and add into your to do item and then you will be able to plan your day accordingly if you don't have a to do items to do list then you will do any random thing but if you have the to do item you know what are the things important what are the priorities then it will be a little bit easy for you to complete the big projects big task within a day or within a whatever deadline you have created so that's why you should follow the to do list and manage your work and time hi there and welcome back in this lesson i'm going to push my code into github repository and after pushing our code to github repository it will create a trigger and after that trigger it will going to deploy our new updated react app into our production okay so still now we have created a to-do app we have created a simple workflow using github action now in this lesson we're going to do the same thing but for this to-do app okay so first of all we need to commit all the changes into our local git repo okay and after it we're going to simply push this code and we will see that how it work how our github action you know do sh some action okay so we all know that github action is a cicd tool it will act on any kind of trigger as in my workflow yaml file i have set the trigger for on push as well as on pull okay so here i'm going to use this git push command to push my code up there and let me open my repo here you can see that this is all workflows you can see here and this is the workflow to app which is taking place right now one thing which i left is that i have not used that npm run build command so that the there will be changes into our build directory In the build directory where your source code reside for the github page i think that there will be problem so it will be better for me to wait and check that what error will be going to have as you can see we got some error and uh, let me open this and see there what kind of error we are getting and after it what we're going to do is to you know use that command npm run build and to build a new directory for the new react app so here we got some error in this step of github action workflow so here you can see one more thing that if one of your steps fail then all the steps which comes after it will not going to be run and this way you can see that it is in it is in a failed state okay and in order to tackle this problem let me see one more thing anything else which is wrong here or not mm, okay that's the case so let's open our terminal and here I'm just I'm going to build once more let's write npm run deploy okay and after it it will going to create some new files and folders updated index.html and uh, it will be all be saved inside our build directory Okay, now our build folder is now ready and uh, let's wait for the message published once it is done then we're going to check once more time now here you can see we got published message 
and here you can see we got a new workflow whatever action we perform and uh, let me open this pages build and deployment as here you can see that it is checked with a tick uh, which simply means that the workflow is somehow succeeded and here you can see after refreshing the page you got your react app into your github page this is the way that how github action works okay hope you understand if you have any kind of doubt you can ask me in the q a section till then keep learning keep moving ahead stay motivated that's all